Hey there everyone, Haz here and welcome to the second episode of our Splatoon 3 Weapons Guide series where I go through each weapon type and try to introduce them, their playstyle and roles and help you decide if it's something you'd like to try yourself. The previous episode we talked about Splatlings and today we'll go through one of Splatoon's really unique weapon type, the Rollers. First of all, thank you very much for the support on the series, I'm really happy there is so much interest for something like this and I also heard your feedback so I'm adding a new section to the videos where I'll also recommend abilities that match well with these weapons. Before we start, I also do other guides and videos for Splatoon and if you're interested then consider subscribing to support the future of the channel. Also keep in mind this series is mainly aimed at new players to help them see how each weapon is played, but it might have information for everyone. Now let's dive in. Rollers are possibly one of the most unique weapon types in Splatoon and the shooter genre overall, with their comedic visuals yet very unique and effective playstyle. They are very powerful and sneaky melee weapons in Splatoon, but some versions of them are also capable of playing a very effective support or backline role as well. A good roller player can surprise you out of nowhere without a chance to get away from getting splatted. They are very easy to get into weapon type but quite hard to master thanks to their obscure progression as how most players start to play rollers is almost complete opposite of how a good roller is played on high levels. Complete opposite of our previous weapon type, the Splatling, rollers are very popular first choices for new players, both for their uniqueness and ease of use. Since to have fun and get some easy splats, rollers don't really require nearly as much aim as other weapons and allows you to focus more on having fun or even to just learn the game's mechanics. That also makes rollers a very good learning weapon. But beware, once a roller loses the element of surprise, it can quickly find itself in a position where they are unable to escape from a ranged gun. Rollers have three main ways of offense. Rolling, which is both great painting tool and most rollers allow for one-shot splats. Horizontal flings for close-range shotgun-like attacks and excellent peeking shots from under ledges. And vertical flings for long-range snipes and harassment that's also very effective for creating a path for moving fast in swim form. Just like other weapon types, rollers also have multiple styles of weapons such as the splat roller that's focusing on sneaky close-range attacks and slayer gameplay or the dynamo roller that's more of a support or backline roller capable of extremely good ink pressure and long range harassment. I would recommend rollers for people who are just in love with the unique design of the weapon or prefer a more melee approach to Splatoon or other third person games requiring less aiming and more careful and tactical gameplay. Rollers can be a deadly frontline or a very effective support role in a team either punishing enemy backliners and loners or denying your opponents from advancing with well-timed surprise attacks or pain pressure with your flings. Rollers are also an excellent weapon type to learn Splatoon's rhythm, how the game works and how to move properly on stages as they require more precise movement than other weapons. Difficulty-wise, rollers are a bit of an in-between as it mostly depends on which roller you're playing and also on what level of Splatoon you are. In general, with their ease of use and beginner friendliness, I would give them 2 stars difficulty wise. The main reason is that anyone can start playing a roller and have a fairly good time and surely get some splats without having to learn any advanced aiming technique or weapon mechanics such as charging. Also a lot of players in general have a hard time reacting to aggressive roller players. Of course like any other weapon, once you get on a higher level it requires lots of practice and skill as more advanced players know a roller's weakness. With the exception of the Dynamo Roller, which is a support, I would mostly categorize rollers as a Slayer class weapon type. Your job is to push and be aggressive and get as many splats as possible for your team. While others focus on making sure about the objective, whether it's turf war or ranked, you focus on making sure the enemy team never feels safe and harass them as best as you can with surprise attacks and quick rush attacks. Personally, I think one trap most new roller players fall into is that they use the roller as a stereotypical painting tool, rolling through the stage, inking turf, and not focus as much on disrupting the enemy lines. I think this is mostly because of Turf War, where it's all about inking the ground. Because of that, I think to truly grasp the playstyle of a roller, ranked or anarchy battles are the best to master this weapon type, where inking isn't the main focus but rather play around an objective and splatting the enemy team. This forces most roller players to start playing aggressive and truly bring out the uniqueness and effectiveness of the weapon, becoming a real danger to everyone who ever got splatted by a roller from behind. As a slayer and mostly melee oriented weapon, there are two abilities on your items I recommend the most. First is swim speed. 
You want to be as fast as possible and get in and out of danger as fast as you can. Anything that sees you and is ranged is great danger and you have to be quick on your feet to either get in for a fast splat or get out of there and reposition for advantage. A slow and spotted roller player is a splatted roller player and has no chance against experienced players who knows what to look for. The second most important or even equally important ability in my opinion is an exclusive primary ability, the Ninja Squid. This special primary ability will hide most of the ripple animations of your swimming and will let you hide and sneak on your opponents without them spotting you immediately. This ability in my opinion is mandatory if you even want to have a chance of sneaking up on most people and will tremendously help you play as the dreaded frontline roller. Ninja Squid also slows your swimming down slightly so it's definitely recommended to combine it with swim speed abilities. Rollers have some excellent sub weapons and specials in Splatoon 3, but I don't like all of them that much personally. Autobomb, Curling Bomb and Sprinkler are all very useful and something I like as they either support the strengths of their given roller or complement to an overall playstyle. Autobombs can really put extra stress on someone you sneak up on or even lure them into your roller, while Sprinklers in a Dynamo roller will further enhance the weapon's ability to cover the ground with ink super useful in both Turf Wars or Splat Zones in Ranked. The Curling Bomb is probably one of my favorites, as a good Curling Bomb can not only create a path for your roller to sneak ahead, but can be timed as well for effective ranged splats. Quick tip for the Curling Bomb is if you hold down the button you can charge them up for short range and larger explosions. For specials, I prefer something aggressive that helps oppress the enemies even more, so my favorite is the Tena Missiles on the Flingsa Roller. But Big Bubbler on the Splat Roller is also very useful in case you need some protection or a sure way to fall back or hold a position. This time around the Dynamo Roller is rocking the new Tactic Cooler which pretty much secures its position as an excellent support weapon as the Tactic Cooler provides 4 drinks to your whole team providing each player with various abilities for the duration of the buff. Rollers are a fun and unique way of playing Splatoon and if they are the weapon type you are interested, go for it. While there is a definitely an increasing learning curve for them, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, where mid-level players will punish careless roller play, learning this weapon is really satisfying as I haven't played any other shooter where you get a similar sense of accomplishment using a funny looking weapon like a roller. I feel it's mandatory to say this in each episode of the series, but remember that each weapon in Splatoon is viable and can be as powerful as any other as long as its wielder is experienced. If you truly love a weapon type, you can make it work, as a lot of professional players have already proven naysayers wrong. And that is it for our second episode in the weapon series, the rollers. Hope you enjoyed it and gave you insight to this unique weapon and also helped you see or imagine the way it can be played. As always, I'm open to feedback what else I should include in the series, but I will work hard to release all the weapon types and give you a good overview of the weapons. More episodes will come and the next part is going to be about dualies, so look forward to that. Until then, consider checking out the rest of my videos and guides to learn more about Splatoon. Thank you so much for all the support, I'm truly grateful for everything. It's been a very pleasant transition into creating Splatoon content that only made me more motivated for the future. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye